that many of the statements made in there at that time could not be proven, but that modern scientific methods are now in a position to prove what Mohammed said 1400 years ago. We present to you Professor Alfred Kronar, who is one of the world's most famous geologists. He became well known among his colleague scientists for his criticism against the theories of some of the major scientists in his field. We met with him and presented to him several Quranic verses and a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah bless him and grant him peace. He studied them, commented on them, and then we had a discussion with him. Thinking of many of these questions and thinking uh, where Muhammad came from, he was after all a Bedouin. I think it is almost impossible that he could have known about things like the common uh, origin of the universe because scientists have only found out within the last few years with very complicated and advanced technological methods that this is the case. Professor Kronar chose an example from the Quran which proved to him why the Quran could not have come from Muhammad himself. The example which Professor Kroner chose is a description in Quran of the fact that this universe had its beginning. In one single entity Allah said, do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together before we clave them asunder we made from water every living thing. The meaning of Ratkan in Arabic, as Ibn Abbas, Mujahid and others said, is that the heavens and the earth were stuck together or blended together and that they were later separated from each other. Professor Kroner used this as an example to prove that no human being during the time of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, could have known this by himself. Somebody who did not know something about nuclear physics 1400 years ago could not, I think, be in a position to find out from his own mind, for instance, that the earth and the heavens had the same origin, or many other of the questions that we have discussed here. Professor Kroner, so it seemed to us, has a special talent of being evasive. For example, when we were in discussion, we asked him to describe the geological conditions of Arabia. We specifically asked him, was Arabia full of orchards and rivers? He replied, yes. We asked, when was this? He said, during the Snow Age. And it is further known that the North Polar Icebergs are slowly moving southwards. When those polar icebergs become relatively close to the Arabian Peninsula, the weather will change and Arabia will become one of the and wettest uh, parts of the world. We asked him, will Arabia become the land of orchards and rivers? He said yes. It is a scientific fact. This astonished us. And we wondered how he could state this as a scientific fact, while it was related to the future, the North Pole southwards. In fact, the polar snow is now on the way to get closer to the Arabian Peninsula. And he added, we can see the signs of this in the snow blizzards striking the northern parts of Europe and America every winter. Scientists have other signs and information proving the actual beginning of another snow age. It is a scientific fact. So we said to him, what you have just mentioned has only been known to scientists after a long series of discoveries and with the help of a specialized instruments which helped to support their research. But we have already found this mentioned by Prophet Muhammad 14 centuries ago. He said, the last hour will not come upon us until the lands of the Arabs are once again pasture lands and filled with rivers. 
At this point, we ask it, Professor Kroner, who told the Prophet Muhammad that the lands of the Arabs were once filled with orchards and rivers? He immediately replied, the Romans. This reminded me of Professor Kroner's evasive ability. We asked him another question. We said to him, but who informed the Prophet Muhammad that the lands of the Arabs would once again become pasture lands and rivers. Professor Kroner becomes evasive if embarrassed, but if he faces truth, he is brave enough to state his opinion frankly. He replied this could have been known only through revelation from above. Finally, after our discussions, with him, he made the following comments, and these are his words. If you combine all these, and you combine all these um, statements are, that are being made in the Quran, in terms that relate to the earth and the formation of the earth and science in general, you can basically say that the statements made there in many ways are true. They can now be confirmed by scientific methods, and uh, in a way you can say that the Quran is the simple science textbook for the simple man and that many of the statements made in there at that time could not be proven but that modern scientific methods are now in a position to prove what Muhammad said 1400 years ago. Allah confirms in his book that this is no less than a message to the worlds and ye shall certainly know the truth of it after a while.